So the Cardinals are uh, more than likely going to lose this game. But the Cardinals seem to turn things around. They are in first place in the NL Central. How, mm -hmm. how good are we feeling about St. Louis right now? I, I like them a lot, especially even though they don't have Carpenter going like they want to. They still right. have power in the middle of the lineup with Ozuna. Zuna. Uh, fam and company. I love their athleticism. They're catching the ball a little bit better. And when you have Martinez and Walker re-emerging, the front line guys, they can shut down anybody in the Central and in the National League. So there's definitely going to be some competition going down the series. The Cubs are not just going to be able to run away with it. I think it's going to be back and forth between a bunch of ball clubs in the Central because the Central has turned out to be pretty tough. Yeah, the yeah, well, I mean, let's right be, there. yeah there's three and a half games mm -hmm. separate four teams mm -hmm. right now. So I think just in general, I mean, the loss of Yadier Molina yeah, yeah. is definitely going to be big. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the heart and soul of that lineup. When he's behind the plate, their ERA is the 3.49. Point... Yeah, you know? yeah, ERA is 3.49. With him not in the lineup, it's a 4.10. So that's over a half a run difference right. when you don't have that man behind the plate. Uh, obviously, Matt Carpenter and Dexter Fowler have to get going. But for this team to be where they are right now without getting – you know, Production. contributions from some of their star players. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, I thought the Cubs were going to run away with the division early in the year, but now I'm jumping on the St. Louis Cardinal train. All right, Molina was getting it done at the plate as well, but of course he's going to be missed the most behind the plate, as you mentioned, because yeah. that pitching staff is really going to struggle without him, more than likely without of course. him calling those ball games. All right, so the Nets with the uh, the one nothing lead there. They won 7 of 8 after a slow start. Seemed to be turning things around. Are the Nets now who we thought they would be at the beginning of the season? Yeah, man, they look good. Yeah. And, and I don't necessarily know if it was moving Bryce Harper into the leadoff spot. Uh, but either way, man, they seem like they got a little fight in them. Yeah. They had that series at home against the Philadelphia Phillies, who, I mean, it's a team, no joke, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Gabe's got them boys playing over there. But for them to fight back and to win those last two games the way they did, mm -hmm. seems like it's given them a little momentum moving forward. Obviously, first-year manager Dave Martinez, uh, he's starting to figure some things yeah. out. He's learning his guys, and they're starting to gel a little bit. Love the move for Harper to the leadoff spot. It lets him get his timing. He gets his swing and go aggressively at pitches and he gets his swagger back. Of course. When Zimmerman, who, who was huge for them last year, almost MVP type yeah. season, he came out the gate struggling and the team struggled offensively because they had a bunch of injuries. Radon still down. When they get back, that will be yep. the teeth of their lineup. And they're the best three, four, and five in all of baseball oh, when yeah. they are healthy. So they need to get some time and buy some time. They have the pitching in at the front line with Gio Gonzalez, Strasburg, Scherzer. Those three guys can beat anybody <laughs> in baseball. So they, we knew they were going to be fine. I never lost faith of course. in them. And especially in this division, we love Atlanta. We love their style. But can their pitching grow up? That's the same question for the Philadelphia Phillies, too. Mm -hmm. Have great offense, great athleticism. But can that pitching sustain that and go up against some of the tougher offenses in the National League? It remains to be seen. But, again, this is going to be a fun division, but I think they're going to be at the top of it all said. Yeah, no doubt. When it's all said and done, all you had to do is list off those three pitchers he mm -hmm. listed for you a yeah. second ago, man. And, and that team is right where they need to be. Um, you know, obviously, Bryce Harper still hasn't hit his stride. Right. I don't know if contract talks or, or anything have been kind of the lull for him. Yeah, you know he'll come around. Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously, he's one of the best talents we have in our game. Mm -hmm. And to see him and the leadoff spot, man, to say, hey, he's unselfish enough to be like, you know what, if this helps my team win, then I'll do exactly what Can't pitch does. around him. <laughs> still the team to beat the NL East, <laughs> but Arizona's still the team to beat in the National League. Oh, for sure. Huh? Yeah. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Diamondbacks got my vote all day long, yeah. man. They're fun to watch. They have lineup depth. And ultimately, you're going to have to go through the Diamondbacks. And that's a tough lineup, especially a starting pitcher, right. to navigate because anybody in that lineup can beat you. And they still don't even have Paul Goldschmidt going yet. Yeah. And Pollock has been the best player on their team. He stays on the barrel. And you notice every time he gets hurt, it seems to be that that's the downfall of their season. So he's a huge part of their, their lineup and the callus for their lineup. They continue to keep him hot. They're going to continue to win. All right, we'll keep you updated on what the Nats are doing and saying throughout the show.